As we mentioned, the United States has canceled joint exercises with the Egyptian military. The U.S. says it is also considering further steps. CCTV's Nathan King joins us now from the White House with more. Nathan. Yeah, Elaine, President Obama is not here. He actually interrupted his vacation in Massachusetts to condemn both the Egyptian military and the interim government. Our traditional cooperation cannot continue as usual when civilians are being killed in the streets and rights are being rolled back. As a result, this morning we notified the Egyptian government that we are canceling our biannual joint military exercise, which was scheduled for next month. The Bright Star operations usually involve several thousand troops from both the U.S. and Egypt. Since the 1981 Camp David peace accords between Egypt and Israel, the drills have been staged every two years and are a symbol of the close cooperation between Cairo and Washington. What Washington didn't do was cut or suspend any of the $1.3 billion in direct military aid. But U.S. President Obama says that's under review. Reinforcing that, U.S. Defense Secretary Chuck Hagel issued a statement after speaking to Egypt's top military figure, General Abdul Fattah el-Sisi. In that statement, Hegel stressed ongoing cooperation, but he said, I made it clear that the violence and inadequate steps towards reconciliation are putting important elements of our long-standing defense cooperation at risk. The U.S. decision not to cut military aid now seems to be part of an incremental approach designed to keep what leverage Washington has in Cairo. After all, the U.S. may need influence going forward. I would argue, and I think the administration also believes, that it actually could get worse. There are shoes that haven't dropped yet. So the question for the administration is, do you want to expend that one bullet? Do you want to send that signal now? Or do you, do you wait until you may need to do that at a later point? And that's really the predicament they're in right now. Keeping ties with the Egyptian military also serves U.S. regional interests. Military aid began flowing shortly after Egypt broke with the rest of the Arab world in 1979, eventually signed a peace deal that recognized Israel, a treaty that remains the cornerstone of U.S. foreign policy in the Middle East. And while the Egyptian military is unlikely to reject that agreement, Washington is interested in keeping the status quo in the region. And as the Bright Star exercises show, there are deep ties between the U.S. and Egyptian militaries going back decades. Why would Washington cut those, especially as the Egyptian military seems to be the only functioning institution in the country? Regional security interests inside the Obama administration also has a policy of democracy promotion in the Middle East. So any siding with military rule or backing an emergency law, any uh, image of doing that will also further set back Washington's image in the region. It's a really difficult balancing act the White House has right now. Well, Nathan, you mentioned there that the U.S. fears things could get worse. Um, what are some of those things? Uh, the thing is, would be a banning of the Muslim Brotherhood outright, as it would be under the, as it had been under the Mubarak rule. Uh, also, extension of this emergency law. Remember, it's only for 30 days. Remember, it was in for 30 years under Mubarak uh, as well. Any sliding back from sort of an election timetable. We heard about six months before this crackdown. It could be now as long as a year. And of course, the Muslim Brotherhood have been brought back into the process. None of that is happening right now. Uh, it could get worse, and Washington knows it, so they need that leverage. All right, Nathan King at the White House, thanks for that. As